Lately, the internet has become a virtual, opinionated battlefield, supplying infinite blogging sites to anyone voicing opinions about any topic. However, it has also provided student activists of any group a place to congregate and view the numbers of them which exist. The internet is a prosperous communication device, but it also advocates individual utilization. Technology reinvented activism, but are the grassroots forms of student protests likened to those of the 1960s more effective still than what technology has to offer? Students are active in broad issues today. They protest about human rights, diversity in higher education, and about budget cuts. Activism appears to be living in an ambiguous state. Some see activism as a dying form of free speech, something that looks appealing but amounts to nothing. Yet, student activism frequently surfaces in the news. Carrie Bluth, an art student at NAU, recognizes that, compared to the 60s, modern activism is dispersed throughout many different subjects of activism. Carrie participates in PERG, which stands for Public Interest Research Group. Student activism, it's still, it's got a lot of strong points. I just feel like it's more scattered. Like the instead of just a few big movements, there's, there's a bunch of movements going on. They're just small and they need to gain more power. I interviewed Joel Olson about the differences between the student activism of the 1960s and now. Joel is an associate professor at Northern Arizona University who teaches classes which focus on political theory and social movements. I don't think it's the majority influence. I think what the difference between the 60s and now is that is, it has to do with the political and historical context. Joel doesn't think that diversity weakens student activism. He believes that a group of students must be present in order for an activist movement to spark. A social movement is incredibly difficult and it's not something you can plan and carry out. It's not, it's, Social movements are, are sparked by things that we don't, that no one can predict and no one can plan for. Technology adds new elements and tools to today's student activism. While students still utilize hunger strikes, sit-ins, and picketing, blogging and protesting online are adding new forms of modern activism. These tools assist students in assembling and getting a word out about a protest. Email and Facebook provide a new influence because a person can go from local college to across the sea. Carrie, as a student, sees technology like Facebook as being useful to student activists because they can notify thousands of people with one email. However, he says that confrontational protests are effective as opposed to an email, which he describes as impersonal. Definitely, yeah. Um, the ones that are actually like confront you in your everyday life are like the ones that um, like people set up booths outside the union be like hey come sign our thing or here's a flyer or something and they give you something that you actually have to look at as opposed to an email you can just you can click open and then just kind of dismiss it and it's much more impersonal. Arizona State Representative Ray Barnes agrees. Well what about the people who just sign an email and send it because uh, uh, somebody asked them to? They're not involved. That's not activism. That's followership. That's not leadership. That's followership. Joel thinks social networks and emails can be useful. Thing. So Facebook is a, is a great tool. I've, I've seen lots of uh, protests and, and the word get out about on Facebook like that in ways that, are, that I could only dream I had those tools back in the, in the late 80s and the 90s to organize. Uh, so I, I, I wouldn't underestimate it, especially when it's used to get people to go out to an event or something like that. Um, but it's a, t it's a tool. Yeah. And, and when we mistake tools for strategies, that's the problem. No. Currently, Joel participates in the Arizona Repeal Coalition, a group against anti-immigration laws. But in his youth, Joel found activism important. Joel believes in organizers, not activists. He claims that he has been an activist too long, and that what needs to change is how we approach a certain community, which is feeling the issues at hand the hardest. Activists and organizers. Hmm. Activists are those who are politically active and holding protests and press conferences and you know Facebook sites and things like that. But they don't 
they don't have a base of supporters. Whereas an organizer is someone who roots him or herself in a community and tries to organize with that community for power. And I think organizing is, and, and, I've, done, and I did, I've done too much activism in my life. I've been to maybe thousands of protests, I don't know, uh, and uh, demonstrations and events and things and without necessarily having a, a base to a community and, and a strategy to how to mobilize that base. And the Repeal Coalition is one of the first or, uh, forms of political work that I've really been connected to an actual base. I've had lots of, uh, I've participated in lots of uh, street protests hmm. where we would wear masks. And uh, I never got arrested any of those, so I'm glad. And they were thrilling. It's thrilling to challenge power and to have to be a, that close to a cop, and him cussing in your face and you cussing in his. Uh, but ultimately, I don't know if I did anything with those. I don't know if those have gotten me anywhere. I got uh, any closer to a free society. Not many activists are ever arrested, both today and in the 60s. However, some students don't feel sexy if they're not being loud. Young college students want to be recognized, but sometimes for the wrong reason. The 1960s seemed to have made this style of protesting trendy, along with modern media. Only large protests make the media, and the media is filled with the same news over and over. How many were hurt? How many were arrested? You have to do a lot of things that aren't sexy, like you know, holding up signs or yelling at cops. You know, all of which I endorse, but um, but it's not as sexy, and so a lot of folks don't want to do that, especially folks in their 20s. But what happens when a good cause becomes a trend? But I feel like there's a fair amount of people just putting it on as well um, in order to keep up with what's going on. You know, the, the green movement in the past, you know, five years has suddenly become hip. I kind of, I parallel it to that. You know, because there's people eating granola 60 years ago, you know, and living with the earth that way, and it goes way back. It's not a new thing. Though this creates a number, it creates a null number. Some arguments needing activism become a black and white argument, much like the issue of abortion. People become so focused on what side they are on, they forget to listen. The 1960s are famous for the eruption of student protests on American campuses, However, activism is still all over the place, and student activism is important. Well, college kids are important yeah. because college kids have flexible schedules, they've got time, they've got energy, mm -hmm. so it's important. they play an important role, for sure. Recently, Mr. Barnes went to Disneyland with his family and his three-year-old daughter. He told me that during his trip, his granddaughter talked about the election between McCain and Obama. We didn't know as much about uh, when we were 18 and getting ready to vote. Well, it was actually 21 back then. They changed it to 18 afterwards. We, when we were 21, we didn't know as much about uh, politics as my three-year-old granddaughter does now. This illustrates a big difference. But what we have to remember is that comparing student activism in the 1960s to now is like comparing apples to oranges.